This is Salma Shemmel for the group room in Chicago at the annual AACR meeting, the American Association of Cancer Research. Joining me now is Dr. Jose Basalga, Associate Director and Chief of Hematology Oncology at the Massachusetts General Hospital Cancer Center in Boston, Massachusetts. Hello, Dr. Basalga. Hi, Salma. How are you? I'm fine, thanks, and I appreciate you making time. This is a busy meeting for you, and you're going to give us a recap of what you think are some of the real highlights coming out of this AACR meeting. We have been working on PI3 kinase inhibitors, but what we had until now uh, were just pan-PI3 kinase inhibitors, so uh, inhibitors that would block the, the, all the isotypes of the enzyme. We know that in breast cancer and in squamous carcinoma, uh, there is a mutation of one isotype of this enzyme called PI3 kinase alpha. That's just one isotype. And that mutation today we can detect, so we can sequence the tumors. So we presented the first clinical trial with a specific inhibitor of the PI3 kinase alpha uh, isotype. And we saw some dramatic responses. So these are, again, patients with breast cancer, patients with colon cancer, head and neck tumors that carry this mutation. And they responded uh, to an agent that basically is the void of side effects, one pill a day. In particular with the breast patients, what percentage of breast cancer patients will present with this? So it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a significant proportion. It's, it's about, about, if you can believe that, 30% of the tumors that are estrogen receptor positive carry this uh, mutation. So this could become uh, um, its own class of, of, so this could become like a new um, classification on, in breast cancer, so you could uh, need to, from now on, describe breast cancer by the status of the PI3 kinase gene. And so, so this is uh, terribly exciting news, uh, this new uh, family of inhibitors, and they are so much better than eborolimus in this indication, just because they are so much more potent. When would we start implementing this into the screening and practice management of patients? Now. Uh, we, we have to start now. So we were uh, talking um, as part of a very nice initiative called Stand Up to Cancer, and there's a number of centers that we are part of that. And we presented our data, and we are now collectively um, doing this. Uh, it can be done also in the community. So. For the first time now, you have companies that do this, and you know, for a reasonable cost. So, it, so this is now something that I believe that as these trials become available. So it's not whether these compounds are going to be already in the market; they are not in the market, and it's going to take a while. But we're going to have clinical trials for these patients to if analyze I, their genomic profile. No, we're going to have clinical trials with therapies against this mutation. And those therapies are already in the pipeline? Oh yes, and they are available in, in institutions. In so if I were uh, a practicing oncologist somewhere and I had a patient with uh, uh, advanced breast cancer, I would think about the possibility of looking for this mutation because then these patients can be referred to centers. And how does a patient who may be viewing this ask her doctor about this analysis? How, what is the terminology she would use? So the terminology is, I would you like to discuss or shall we consider the possibility of genotyping my tumor? Or, if you wish, uh, sequencing my tumor for those mutations um, against whom there may be some therapies available today. Uh, the exercise of looking for mutations um, that are not actionable, if you wish. So, yeah, the tumors will have many mutations, and I think uh, we are not ready yet in the day-to-day -day practice to look for all these mutations because we don't know what it means, and we don't know what to do about it. But there is a number of growing mutations that we know what it means, and most importantly, we can do something about it. Uh, so that's, those would be the ones that I think patients have to begin to, and physicians begin to consider uh, in, in every single case. This whole area of genotyping tumor, tumors and identifying mutations is such a total 
shift in the way we look at cancer is so dramatic of a time because 10 years ago, this was not an area. We were treated much more like a cookie cutter approach. Yeah. Yeah. So this has been something that uh, it has been naturally coming to life in the last three years. Uh, uh, before coming to this meeting, I was looking at the number of patients that we have been sequencing at the MGH, uh, just to get a flavor on where we're coming from and where we're going. Five years ago, we were sequencing maybe 100 cases a year. Uh, last year, we sequenced 2,000 cases. This year, we're going to sequence 3,000. So it's going to be an exponential growth. So five years ago, even three years ago, this was not being done. And now, so things are going fast. And the unit of measure is not decades. The unit of measure is years or even months. The cost of doing this is dropping by the day. The easiness, the, uh, it's, it's easy to do it. The only thing you need is a tumor block. It's not that you need uh, any longer, uh, like in the old days, uh, fresh, fresh tumor biopsy. You, you don't need that any longer. And if a patient who was treated a bit ago were to now recur, this opens up extended opportunities because tests that were not available years ago may become very relevant for a patient who recurs with one of these cancers. Absolutely. So. Uh, you know, patients that had a disease years ago and, and now they have recurrence, uh, the landscape uh, of what's out there for them uh, is very, very different. And the corresponding compounds, are they in phase one or phase two studies? So what we presented is the phase one part mm -hmm. and they are all entering now um, large phase two trials. So, and there are gonna be a number of them, so it's not just, and I would think that um, a significant number of centers around the country and around the world uh, would have those uh, uh, trials um, uh, available. What we are beginning to see also is that some um, institutions are going to be uh, putting on their websites what's available out there for everybody so that uh, patients and physicians can take a look and say, you know, if I have this, what would be available for me in that particular hospital? And so it's a uh, and, and it's, it's, so it's, it's, it's exciting, that's what I, I think it is. I love talking to you because you have this excitement and passion about you. It's palpable. We spent time with you at San Antonio, yeah. and you had important information to share there. And I'm just curious, when you leave and go back to, to Boston and, and get back into your own um, setting and your own labs with your own staff, where is your research going when you return home? I am right now focused on a variety of projects. These PI3 kinase alpha inhibitors, I want to make sure that we are launching the phase two and the phase three studies so that we get approval of this soon. So that's, that's an urgent focus of my work. Uh, the other work more on the discovery side uh, of, of things is that uh, we are looking at compensatory responses by the tumor that result in resistance. So we have, and others have identified that uh, when you block one pathway, the tumor cells have the capacity to activate other pathways. Uh, if we could find on every tumor what are these compensatory pathways, we could make big uh, progress. So um, we are working in this. It's terribly exciting. Uh, we are beginning to get some results. And the future thing, two or three years from now, would be that a patient would start on a clinical trial with a compound. A day later, we would do a biopsy, mm -hmm. and then we would identify how to block that pathway in full, and that could result in dramatic responses. So that's, that's what we're doing. A real pleasure. Thank you so much, Dr. Jose Vesalga, Associate Director and Chief of Hematology Oncology at the Massachusetts General Hospital Cancer Center in Boston, Massachusetts. Thank you so much. You're the best.